The submission settings are all of the settings that you will enter for each individual entry the users will be entering into your call. This first section is the basic settings for your submission time frame. Now, the first setting here is the max entries per user. So whatever number you enter here will limit the users to that many submissions. You have the start and end date. Whatever you set the start and end date to, users will only be able to enter submissions into your call during that time frame. Once the date passes, a user will not be able to enter into your call. You can add special instructions that will be displayed on the user submission page right here. And then also much like the user registration settings, you can set up a fee per entry. And I'll demonstrate that here in this video tutorial as we didn't demonstrate that in the user registration section. All right, these next two sections are almost identical to the uh, registration settings. These are all of the fields that are required. The users have to choose a category and they have to submit a title and they have to submit an image. But apart from that, you can add or take away some of these default optional required fields or you can set up your own required fields for specific pieces of information you need to capture per submission. So I'll demonstrate a couple of these settings really quick. So I'm going to switch over here and log in as a test user I've got. So I'm going to click on the login button. And this, of course, assumes the user has already registered. And I've just got a, one, a user called Jane at artcall.org here. I'm going to log in as Jane. And this is what she would be presented with. Now you can see I've already got a few test submissions in here that's been, uh, that I've uploaded to demonstrate the process, but I'll walk through an individual one. So she would say, add new submission. And of course, I've got my categories all set up. So she's going to enter maybe this into the fine art category and under charcoal drawing. And she has to give her piece a title. So the title goes here. And then I've got the sale price enabled. So she would have to enter in a sale price, let's say $200. And all of the category descriptions you set up will be available and underneath this hover for the users to see exactly which entries go into which categories should you set up your category descriptions. And then they, uh, Jane here would say, submit entry details. That's gonna take her to the next step where she would add her images. So I'm not gonna follow through with this process. I'm gonna hit done, view submission. And you'll see that because Jane did not add a image with her submission, she's getting a warning here that says, you didn't add an image so she can come back later and select add image and then attach an image at any point in time. So there's the submission that Jane's entered and uh, all of the data that's captured via those submissions is back here on these uh, admin panel. Now notice that it says max entries per user four. So if we go back here and look at Jane, she's already entered one, two, three, four. So when she clicks add new submission, she's gonna get this message that says, you have the maximum number of submissions already. So she would either need to delete one of her submissions um, in order to add another submission. So that's how we can limit users. If I go ahead and switch this to five and update this, this should now allow Jane to add another submission. So I'll come back here. She's got four currently. I say add submission. And of course it's letting her add one because she's underneath the threshold here. I'm going to stay on this page and I'm going to add a few more custom fields to these submissions so you can see how those work. I'll jump back here and say edit submission settings. And I'm gonna turn on a fee this time. So I'm gonna say, yes, there is a submission fee and I'll just leave this at $25 per submission. And I'm gonna come down here and update those settings. And as soon as you add that fee, when Jane goes to add an entry, she'll automatically get this payment details form built right into here. And she would punch in her credit card details, hit submit, and it would automatically charge that credit card. And those funds would be deposited into your payment processor account that you have set up. So that's how the submission fees and also the registration fees work in a similar fashion. It's worth noting that if you do have submission or registration fees, all of those will be available to see underneath your payments tab. And you'll be able to see all of the payments and issue refunds directly from this page should you need. I'll switch back up here to the user registration settings. Whoops, the submission settings rather. And let's add one or two more settings here. So I'm going to turn on a description or method and I'll add one custom field as well. So I'm going to do this one as a checkbox. And uh, let's actually do this one as a, a radio button. And I'm going to say 
include in directory. And then down here in the description, I'll say select yes or no as to whether you want your submission listed on our website directory. And I'm going to require this. I'm going to say value one, yes, value two, no, just a comma separated list there. And I'll go ahead and update these submission settings. Now, of course, this is just a fictional example here, but you'll see how it works. When I come over here and refresh the page that Jane sees, she now sees that sale price and she also sees include in directory and she's able to select yes or no. And uh, this, if she hovers over here, it'll tell her exactly what this field's all about. So that's how you can set up these custom submission fees and capture any sort of data you need from your users through the submission process.